Sixers fans, welcome back. The Sixers are about to get very, very scary again. This past road trip has been actually pretty impressive given the fact that Embiid's out. They have been playing extremely well um, ever since Embiid left. And I think a lot of that has to do with the confidence that Embiid um, put into this team. This team, I've heard a lot of Tobias Harris on JJ Reddick's podcast talk about how impactful Embiid's uh, early season mentality really set a fire to this Sixers team and real and, and gave them the realization of, look, we are better uh, than anybody else in this league. We have the opportunity to go out and win a championship. And I think one thing that set this team this year apart from last year is that mentality. And Embiid set the precedent extremely early on. And the thing is, Embiid's been out and the Sixers have been playing still at a high level. I understand that they've played some teams that are injured, pro, injury riddled with the Lakers and just teams who are not as great. Uh, they have a big game tomorrow against the Nuggets, which Embiid will be out and George Hill will be out. But the Sixers are going to get scary very, very soon. Before jumping in this video, I want to ask you, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm so close to 600 subscribers. I can't believe it. I'm even saying that. I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I'm proud of you guys. It's We've had so much fun along this journey, and the journey is so, it's so young. It's in its infant state. Let's keep it growing, huh? Let's get me to a thousand. Let me get some, let me get some moolala. You know what I mean? Let's talk Sixers. Um, so I, I, I read that George Hill is set to come back soon. Joel Embiid is set to come back soon. Hopefully, I think they said Saturday after this road trip. Same thing with George Hill. There are 26 games left, I believe. And my philosophy here with George Hill is we need him to come back as soon as possible. Um, more so than Embiid because George Hill has never played for the Sixers before. He has never had a flow, a vibe, uh, um, um, some, some energy with this team. And we need George Hill to come back as soon as possible to, to let that grow before the playoff season comes. Because the difference between the Sixers this year and previous years is previous years, we made trades and we just, we never had consistent lineups. And though our starting five hasn't been super consistent this year, given um, protocols and, and people going out with the illness and Embiid hurt and other guys hurt, there has been so much more continuity in this team and, and, um, you know, healthy games and, and games that the team can just gel together. And it's a couple years in now, the guys know how to play well. It's why the Sixers are so good this year. It's everyone knows their specific role and they play it so well. That is the, the beauty of Doc Rivers. Doc Rivers, a renowned head coach, comes in and at the very beginning sets the precedent of this is your role. This is what you bring to this team. Bring this and we're going to be good. So each guy understands their different roles, you know, and it's feed the beast, feed the beast of Joel Embiid. It's the MVP of the league. He's going to be coming back. But the thing is the Sixers are going to be terrifying when Joel Embiid and George Hill come back because it's going to be the best team that Embiid's ever been on when George Hill comes back. This The, the depth is deeper. The rotations are more well-versed. They are, they're more polished. They are better. Um, the way Shake Milton has been playing lately is so great to see. He has been incredible. And my thing with Shake Milton is he's so good when we need him to be good. When 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 we're struggling with injuries, when we're struggling with this and that, he comes in, he does his job, man. And um, the Sixers have floated much more, much better than I thought they were going to. I don't really know how to, it's, it's, it's a phrase that, but we have not had... Uh, Embiid for a while now and personally I thought we were going to go down to the two seed the three seed even and the Sixers have been maintaining excellence at a high level ever since he's been out and that shows you how well this team plays together and how confident this damn team is and more than anything bro it's the confidence for me it's the confidence that this team genuinely believes they can go out and win a championship this year you'll never see a team go out and win a championship that doesn't think they can win a championship that's why this team can do it this year. It's because the confidence is there, and you can see it in the way they play. Tobias Harris is playing at the highest level of his NBA career right now, and it's because we need him to, and he's well aware of that. And it's 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 not even this added pressure onto him because he still slows the game down. He still does what he has to do and what he does best. He's not this isolation guy that Brett Brown wanted him to be. He understands he works best with three, four, five dribbles, not seven, eight, nine dribbles, and he's playing that way, and it's just producing better. Um, Tobias Harris had this really, really good uh, thought on JJ Reddick's podcast, I should say. And he said, it's much easier as an NBA player to go into a game and take the shots that you prepare for. You know, like he, he says, most guys, most casuals, most fans, most 
non-NBA players think that NBA players are just going to go out there and just shoot around all different spots on the floor and just get ready for a game. But it doesn't work like that. NBA players specifically prepare um, the shots and the type of plays that they will see in game. And just by natural ability and by muscle memory and by confidence, you will shoot higher percentages on shots that you prepare more on taking, right? So Tobias Harris is, if you really watch the games and if you really dive, uh, dive deep into Tobias Harris, he takes very similar shots every single game. He is that transition three-pointer behind Ben Simmons. He knows it's coming, so he practices it more in practice. So when the time comes in the game, he's more likely to hit it, and he's been doing that. That elbow jumper off an isolation off a pick and roll, that is his bread and butter, and that is what he does. He prepares that in practice, and it comes into the game. And my thing is now, with Embiid and George Hill coming back, um, it just makes our team so much scarier because we have the league MVP coming back. And though he probably won't win it, and to, to be honest, I cared. I cared about that when Embiid went down. I cared so much because I was just like, man, this guy deserves it. He deserves this MVP. He put everything and more into this season. But now, I don't know how much Embiid wants it. And it's beautiful. Because it makes me realize there's a bigger there's a bigger goal in mind. It's not this seasonal award type shit. It's not go out and win Defensive Player of the Year. Go out and win MVP. It's go out and win the championship. It's go out and be the best player, the most dominant player in the NBA that the NBA has seen since Shaquille O'Neal every single night. Not because he wants some reward, but, but, but because he wants to be the best. And he is the best. And my thing is, man, Embiid coming back, it's going to obviously make this team even better. And the Sixers are really good right now. The Sixers are really good without Embiid and just wait until that absolute beast of a human being comes back. Our offense will be unstoppable. Tobias Harris has proven time and time again with Embiid out that he's a fourth quarter guy because he's always been a fourth quarter guy. I, I know a lot of people have their criticisms on Tobias Harris, but I, I don't want to hear it because one thing Tobias Harris has always given us is a fourth quarter score. And with Embiid now, it's we have two guys who can do that. And Embiid is the most dominant player I've ever seen in my life um, outside of maybe LeBron James. But He's going to be that guy that just go out and get his own bucket and say it's not falling or say you want something different because the double team's coming. Tobias Harris will give you production at a very high level. There are three all-stars on our team, and they all bring very unique traits to this team, and it is why the Sixers are so well-rounded. And when George Hill coming in, he's one of the better veteran half-court point guards in the league, and where the Sixers have struggled the most is the half-court set. We always have. It's because we don't have a traditional point guard or even really a point guard who runs a half-court well. Ben Simmons is not a half-court point guard because he just cannot shoot. It's interesting watching Ben Simmons and the Sixers uh, play in the half-court set because it's like Seth Curry kind of seamlessly fits into the point guard position a little bit or Danny Green or Tobias Harris and Ben Simmons becomes more of the dunker spot guy and falls back into more of a four and it's really interesting how Doc Rivers has made that work so well but now with George Hill you can roll out a lineup with George Hill and the starting five and take you know Danny Green out or take Seth Curry out and it's really becoming scary because George Hill, though as not good of a defender as he used to be, is still a pretty good perimeter defender. He can give you open three-point shots at a very high clip. He's a very good shooter, and he's a very reliable, um, decent playmaker, for especially from the half-court set, and he hits his free throws at an extremely high rate. The thing is, guys, that the Sixers are really, really good right now. They're really, really good, and it's just it's only going to get better. It's only going to get better that we're, we've been maintaining in the absence of Joel Embiid, even trading Tony Bradley and trading guys who, you know, I mean, we didn't need, but we're helping when Embiid's out and we still got some dubs, man. We still got to win. I mean, we beat the Lakers handily. I know the score doesn't really necessarily show that, but that was a, a pretty handedly win, you know, um, it was a pretty easy win. And I, I, and, and I'm just excited to see what the Sixers are going to get back because when Embiid and, and Hill come back in the lineup, this team is really good. Personally, I think if George Hill can produce at the level I think he's going to produce at, I think the Sixers are my favorite to come out of the Eastern Conference right now. I have not said that in videos this year, but I I'm not loving the Brooklyn Nets moves with Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge. They have yet to uh, attack their biggest problem, which is interior defense. And it's just like, I don't know what they're thinking right now. I think if I'm Brooklyn, I would have went out and got Gorgie Deng. Instead, they go out and get LaMarcus Aldridge. And he doesn't answer the Joel Embiid problem. I know probably nobody does, but he does not answer that well. The Sixers are not going to be this rollover team in the Eastern Conference this year. They've proved that over road trips, over the toughness, over the, the hard fourth quarter fault win games, this team's mentality is so much different. 
The Sixers are ready for something this year. They are ready for something. And listening to Tobias Harris, not saying we want to win a championship, but we will win a championship. That's that manifestation. And I am so here for that energy. Peace out. Go Sixers.